Welcome back to episode 11 of the Rip City Rundown podcast, and we are recording this as of the conclusion of game 5. It ended about 5 minutes ago, and we are pretty dejected. Um, so tragic um, to lose in double overtime. Um, Damian Lillard with a historic, like legit- legitimately a historic performance with 12 made threes in 55 points. But unfortunately, it comes in a losing effort because the Blazers, unfortunately, cannot give Damian Lillard help. And now our backs are against the wall, and we have to go protect home court and then try to steal, well, not even steal, and win Game 7 on the road to just to go to the second round of the playoffs. He, the fact that we have no help for Damian Lillard, the fact that there's so many like moments in this game that I just want to touch on that like just define our team and how little help Dame has just like we he, we scored 19 points combined in the total of overtimes Dame scored 17 of those points that is the definition of a one man show um yeah uh Dame had one of his all time performances and it during the game it was incredible to watch hitting threes left and right got fouled on one of them um refs didn't call it um that shouldn't be a shock to anyone um, but puts up 55, the double nickel game. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it doesn't end in a win. I don't even know what to say. I'm just really sad. Uh, we, we'll go through the bench. Um, unfortunately, this is just a harsh reality. When your bench is Carmelo Anthony, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, and his canter, and Anthony Simons, you will not be going far in the playoffs. Um, that is a complete black hole for defense, um, especially Carmelo and his canner and Anthony Simons. C.J. McCollum plays no defense, and he needs 22 shots to score 18 points. Um, I'm in the camp of if we lose this yeah. series, C.J. McCollum needs to, to get traded, unfortunately. It's a harsh reality if you want to make this team better. Um, I've not been in that camp for a really Me neither. ever, but, I mean, this is just showing why. We look at the starting lineup. No one is negative in the plus minus. Dame is plus two. Nurkic is plus one. Powell is plus 11, surprisingly. Covington is even. CJ McCollum is negative seven. When he's on the floor, this team was bad. Now, CJ has had a stellar year. He got injured. He was slowed down, but you have to perform in the playoffs. You have to hit one shot in overtime. Like, help the man out. And the thing is, is... CJ is capable of doing that. We saw it game seven against Denver. He is capable of doing that. It's just today was a game where he really, he didn't even need to carry. He just needed to step up and just like execute his role. And unfortunately he did not do that. He stepped out of bounds late. Oh my gosh. Countless turnovers, missed shots in the clutch. I understand it. you can't hit every shot, but hit it didn't, shot. he hit one clutch three late. Um, but, you know, at this point, I expect more from CJ. 18 points on 20. Here's a little perspective for you. Damian Lillard took 24 shots from the field and scored 55 points. CJ McCollum took 22 shots, two less shots, two, one, two, two less shots since Damian Lillard scored 18 points. Damian Lillard scored 37 more points on two more shots. That is efficiency. And CJ has never been an efficient player, he's a volume shooter. To get average numbers, and it's when you combine that with lack of days cool and poor defense, it's a recipe for a disaster, and you'll never go. You'll you won't go anywhere. Yeah, I mean CJ's gonna have to step up in these last next two games if we want to win, and if he wants to stay with Portland, because I just hope Neil Olshay will have the balls to make a big change. It, it, I, yeah, that and Terry Stotts questionably Terry's probably needs to go. I mean, um, I don't know what you could do as Terry. Like this game was just a. I guess blow after Terry. Blow every team, Terry, like. Terry can only coach the team the players he's given. And the Blazers really prioritize offense, and it's it's tough to win when all your players are only in the positive if they shoot well, because shooting doesn't travel. Shooting is the most has the most variance there is in the league. Defense travels, and the Blazers have little to none of it. And you will not win a championship without defense. So C.J. McCollum, Carmelo Anthony, Indus Canner, Anthony Simons, even Damian Lillard. I give Dame a pass though because he pours in 55. <laughs> Um, can we talk about Robert Covington and missing two wide open dunks in overtime? Like, 
Just yeah. Another um, so huge mistake. So if you know, back in the summer, we uh, traded two first, two round first round picks for Robert Covington, and then he comes into this game. He plays well, it's 19 points, but late he misses two bunnies, two wide open dunks. So I guess that's one first round pick for each missed dunk. So we're throwing. <laughs> So we're throwing away, <laughs> so we're throwing away our future and watching Roko miss dunks as an NBA player. So that was really fun to watch. Um, let's just say if it wasn't for Damian Lillard, we lose by thirty, and that's another problem. Like we just we like to say we're. I believe the team was focused, but there's just no excuse to going down twenty early. And when you say like we're gonna come in, this is a huge game. Everyone knows that. It's just like. I don't know. It's so disappointing when you're down 20 early. I don't know. That was the... I don't know. There's, there was no chance we were ever going to pull away in this game either when we got it back because, I mean, we used all of our defensive stops to come back in the game. Like, when you're already a bad defensive team, you can't go down early because then you're going to have to get stops, and we just don't do that. We shot 21 for 48 from 3 for 44%. Denver shot a little better, but that was really even. The field goal percentage, it's even. pretty even. Everything was pretty even. It just came down to Denver just always had control. Um, they had timely shots from bums such as Monte Morris. I'm sorry, I don't want to call him a bum. He's a very good player. Not players that should be hitting clutch just shot. Just not clutch not shot. players that, yeah, Monte Morris. I don't know if he's ever, I'm not a Nuggets fan. He's capable of scoring 20. I, I don't want to be disrespectful. But he is just not the guy you expect to score 28. You don't expect Marcus Howard to go 3 for 4 from 3 with combo moves, step back threes in people's mouths. <laughs> the fact that we allow Austin Rivers to even get the confidence to have the audacity Austin to score Rivers shot game is just beyond me. The fact that we're, we're allowing losing, him to score 18 we're points. We're losing to a team that gives Austin Rivers 47 minutes a game. That's just insane. And Nikola Jokic is a generational talent. He is so good. He makes everyone around him so much better. But he took 31 shots for 38 points. So I know. Take but advantage of that. I like how Shaq Harrison plays one minute to just get Dame dropped a three on his head. That's kind of funny. McGee plays zero minutes. He was in there for the end. He was in there for less than 59 seconds. Um, oh, man. I just... There's, I mean, look at the fouls. We had three starters foul out. I mean, obviously their star is going to have only one foul, even though he's been We had 31 fouls on us. They, we, we had 31 called on us. They had 24 called the on them. The fact that Jokic only has one foul on him when Nurkic gets six, and they are banging, banging in the post just as much on each side is just beyond me. It blows me. <laughs> it's I mean, <all> weird. <laughs> Jokic pisses me off so much because he's in the post trying to do a move. Before he does the move, he's looking at the ref and screaming at him. If this wasn't a regular season game, he would have been ejected. But no, you can't do that in the playoffs. No, you, you and I don't want NBA TV ratings. I don't want. Yeah, first of all, let's talk about why this game's on NBA t- TV. We're, we're forced to stream this. thing. We're forced to stream the game because the place we're at right now on vacation doesn't have NBA TV. Not blaming the place. That's fine. I'm blaming the NBA for putting one of the best shows in the NBA and Damian Lillard on NBA TV while you put the Suns and Lakers. I know it's LeBron, but I let's come on, man. He's like 58 years old at this point. Wash King, Lemecki. Like, come on. <laughs> um, but, yeah, going back to the Nurkic fouls. So he has six. Jokic has one. Uh, they Could trade blows. Uh, yeah, the charge on y- Nurk really got me because, you know, Jokic is a big fat man. And fat he, man. Well, he, he has slimmed down from 2019, so I respect that. Um, and he's a much better player than 2019. However, probably still takes a lot to knock you down. So when Nurkic is doing a regular post move, you saw like Jokic get ready to set up, and then he, he flailed his arms. You know the the the, the Nuggets do a lot of flailing, um, and now they're doing them. they're they're just chirping a lot. And there's nothing more frustrating as a fan when the other team wins and they chirp and they get the foul calls. And then they chirp because they think they're. It's just so frustrating. I want to shut them up so bad. Like I, I would, swear, we need Game Seven CJ to reemerge. Somehow. We just need like, CJ to reemerge. Like, a twenty-two shot, eighteen-point CJ is not get is getting traded for a bag of chips. Like, I know, I know. Basketball <laughs> is so weird and things happen, but like if Dame drops fifty-five and we lose, but Dame drops ten and we dominate, it's just that's crazy. It's crazy how basketball works, and it really pisses me off because it's just like people. That people are going to remember this performance. Here's the other people thing. People are really going to remember this performance. Yeah, and here's the problem I have with the Blazers as a whole, like from a roster construction standpoint. 
You trade Robert for Robert Covington. He's a very good player, good team defender. You trade for Norman Powell, good team defender, good defender. And then like one of your, but one of your like premier signings of the offseason is Derek Jones Jr. He doesn't play. I kind of wish he did. I don't know. I don't you pick up Ronda Hollis Jefferson. He plays. It's, it's he does nothing. I mean, shout out for Ronnie Hollis Jefferson for going two for two from the and line. Going 21 to the negative on plus minus, even That's though ins- I feel like he played good minutes. But how in nine minutes is the team getting outscored by 21 points? I mean, the Dame had no foul calls on him, which is interesting. How many assists could Dame have tonight if people hit their shots? And I'd say dunks? like... He could have had a 55-20 again. You think? 55-15. Uh, 55-15. In a win. I mean, Robert Cummington makes some dunks. One possession game there at the end. Yeah, no um, one possession game. I hate playing the what if game because like once it happens, it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a, just a fan, that was the most emotional roller coaster I've ever been on outside of probably Game Seven in Denver. You get on early, you're pissed. You come back, you're pumped. You go down late, you're pissed. You tie it. You're it's just back and forth. Let me read out just some of the statistics that I'm reading right now. So obviously Dame had 55 points. The rest of the Blazers have 85. Dame shot 70 percent from the field, 17 to 24. While the rest of the Blazers shot 38% from the field, 30 of 79. Dame was 12 of 17 from three, 70% once again. The rest of the Blazers were 9 of 31 for 29% from three. Dame was set, had 17 points in the combined overtimes. The rest of the Blazers had two. And Dame was 6 of 8 in both overtimes. The rest of the Blazers were 1 for 19. Sometimes 1 for 19. In the overtime? In the overtimes. Sometimes I just feel like when you're Dame's teammate, you're just so in awe of what he's doing. You're not even, like, ready yourself. Like, they're just like, he can bail us out. And when you're C.J. McCollum and you're getting paid, like, $100 million to chuck, it's I can't, frustrating. I can't sit here and look at this roster and say that Dame doesn't have offensive help. And, like, they, they, they shouldn't be going 1-for-19. This team is one of the best offenses in the league. You cannot just do that in overtime and not show up. Like, just because your teammate is can hit tough shots, you can do that, too. It doesn't have to be him. So now we have to. The sh- what needs to happen is we have to win a game six at home, which I the Blazers will be the favorites in that game. That does not mean anything. Like, I'm not confident gosh. at this point. We have to eke out a game six to give us a chance to win the series. At least Dennis Schroeder's not on our team. He went 0 for 9 from the field, 0 point six. <laughs> game six is huge. It's a must win. Obviously, at this point, we're now facing elimination from the playoffs. And it's just, it's tough, because Damian Lillard, he wants to win a championship so bad. And I think as the years go by, he realizes it's not in Portland. Like, if he left Portland, I'd be so pissed. At the, no, yeah, I would just be Dame. mad at the situation. I would respect Dame's opinion, because he wants to win a championship. He wants to be loyal and win a championship. That's so hard to do. It's so hard to do in this league, because A, no one wants to come play in Portland, because it just rains all the time, and it's a small market, and it's in the, the corner of the U.S., unfortunately. So we have to get better marginally, and the only way we're going to win a championship is if Robert Covington and Norman Powell and CJ play like all-stars. I'm really interested to see what Dame's press conference will be like tonight, because I know he's going to get a lot of questions about just like him solely carrying the team. and just. It was warranted when he was hot. Like I get the heat checks, but when you're CJ or when you're Norm or Roke, like Roko, like... He played and shot and played a good game. But I know those two missed dunks are going to be highlighted, but like those are just you have to be ready. Just lay it in. You don't have to go for the thunderous dunk to silence the crowd as you're down four. Like, I know. And then CJ like stepping out of bounds. That's a mental air. He had a lot of turnovers. How many turnovers? Did, did, he only had three turnovers. Nurk play? had six. Was that the good play from Dame to pass that ball? I think it was. I mean, he was wide open. It got tipped by MPJ just a little bit, so that probably threw CJ off Let's slightly. just see. So Roko finishes with six fouls, Norm with four, Nurk with six, CJ with six, Carmelo with four, Ennis with four. That is over half the roster in foul trouble. And on the other end, three no one fouled out. Michael Gordon. Porter Jr. and Austin Rivers had five each. Gordon had four. And after that, no one had any was not in foul trouble. I mean... <laughs> I hate blaming stuff on the refs. I do not want to, but it is so frustrating when Dame and other fans of other teams get mad at Blazer fans because they think Dame should get every call. But I, the only reason why I think sure. Dame should get calls is because it's what the refs are calling on the other end on us. It's like be consistent. For Composo, like get out of here. For be, Austin Rivers, be consistent. So now we have to when win Dame two in a row. Like, I believe in the Blazers. It's going to be really hard. 
Jokic is the MVP for a reason. Are you feeling? I just want a chance at, to Are win the series. Are you feeling better this year or in 2019? Because like we got going one in. out game. I'm talking right going into this next game because like you could say this game is so much more deflating than getting blown out by 30. That's a good. That's know. a good point. I think last time because it was the second round, I was more content with if we had lost, it would have been a successful year for that roster. I guess, like. I don't know. It's uh, you. Sh- it's just a tough loss because, yes, you're like, oh my gosh, Dame played as well as he could, and we still lost. And it's like, well, Dame played about as bad as he could individually shoot, like shooting the ball wise, and we creamed him. We just have to take it one game at a time. We have to win the next game, and then to we gotta go into Denver and win it in Game Seven and deja vu it, have history repeat itself. I don't even care who is in the way for next round. I don't even want to know. I don't care if it's the Lakers or the Suns. I don't care if the Jazz somehow get reseeded. Yeah, at this rate, it's not going to be the Lakers. At this rate, it's not going to be the Lakers, although AD was not playing. I don't care who it is. We, I want to beat the Denver Nuggets. I don't we have to win the back Nuggets to play another series because they don't deserve to. The Nuggets lost to us in the regular season final at home, and then we won game one on the road. We've won two in a row at home and on the road. We can do it again. We have to win game six, and we have to win game seven. So if you're a Blazer fan, tune into game six. Get loud. Play some defense in front of the in front of the TV. And all I'm gonna say is, I just thought about this. I would advise you. I know Blazers don't get national media that much, but I would advise you to not watch the national TV tomorrow. National media, because it's just gonna be Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless talking about how much Dame needs to leave, and it's not gonna be good for your soul. You just need yeah. to just get this game six W. Get this game seven W. Ho- hopefully move on. And then you're a fourth of the way there. It's Heart, that's a heartbreaking loss. I'm super proud of Dame. Played insane. Game six, we have to get off to a better start, and we just have to. Dame, I'm not even going to ask anything more of Dame. He played probably one of the complete best games I've ever seen I from him. the best game of his career. He had one he had turnover. Two, greatest, like, that second over or that first overtime shot was one of the greatest shots. Over I've seen Dame. Michael Porter Jr. or no, over Shaq? Over Shaq Harrison. He, where he got, he got fouled, fouled too. too. But he did a legit, like, he was practically Three. facing the other way and did a full step back and. Got fouled. Like, the, I know the refs aren't going to end it on a foul, but, like, end it on a foul, please, next time. Like, come on. So, I'm not asking any more of Dave. I'm asking more from Norman Powell, Robert Cummington, and CJ McCollum. And Nurkic, you have to be smarter on fouls. I, actually, if you watch this podcast, I would like for you to um, save it, and then I want you to take a clip of what I'm about to say and send it to the Blazer send it to the blazers all right here we go robert cummington make make your dunks play good defense norman powell i need you to shoot better you're a great player shoot better you didn't make one three also you need to take more than three threes if that's because c c cj is hogging then he's hogging cj step the hell up step up dude get off twitter and step up please car carmelo stop being a sieve ronda hollis jefferson you're we're negative twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing all you can. You, yeah, well, you maybe you came in and gave good defense and just continue to do that. Canner, honestly, you played your best game. Simons, you like, it's just team defense, guys. Team defense and Zach Collins just needs to get, get, healthy. get healthy. Get healthy, dude. Like, come on. Injuries, man. That's another story for the Blazers franchise. All the way back to Greg Oden, Brandon Roy, the Bigs, the, the Bigs. bigs. Nurk, CJ, that was all this year. It's been a long year, and I don't want it to end in two days. We have to win game six. Get loud. Um, I would never want to wish in, wish injury on anyone, but if, if Jokic, you know, Jokic broke get, broke, broke his foot COVID. walking down the stairs. Like, if you are in Denver I'm just right now, kidding. If you are in Denver right now, go give Jokic high five because he will violate health and safety protocols and make sure you have COVID when you do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not trying to make a joke, no, but I'm just kidding. we need him not play he's so good and it all care. comes from respect he's so good if we can play their bench the whole game i would do that i don't care if the national media is gonna be like well portland beat a bum team i just want to win well I just move on. if we lose the series the national media will say portland lost to a bum team the denver nuggets they're just michael malone man just not mike I have michael to, i have to say props to you because she makes everyone around him better somehow and Austin River is just killing my dream since college. 13 offensive rebounds for Denver, 10 for Portland. That was actually even, it seemed, for a total while. Rebounds, 45 total for us, 52 for them, assists, 33 for them, 25. I mean, 
They're just beating us in all the categories barely. I mean, and they beat us barely. All right, we got to get, oh, got to clutch up for game six, and hopefully we come back after game six with a much more positive podcast. I'm praying, I'm hoping. I want a game seven. I want so a bad. game seven in Denver. I want it. Let's do it. We'll see you guys later. Peace.